Hi, just a couple days ago Blender Foundation announced new Blender 3.0. One of the most exciting features in this version is Cyrus X, the new incarnation of path tracing rendering engine for Blender. From the first announcements of developers it looks that it is to be much faster than the current version. Is it true? Let's find out. I conducted tests on PC with AMD Ryzen 3 900X, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti and 32GB of RAM. I set Blender to Optics GPU rendering, although I selected only GPU as my optics device, AMD Ryzen was not involved in the rendering process. Since Blender 3.0, Cyclos X branch does not allow you to choose tire size, so I used Progressive Refine in Blender 2.92, so the tire size is not affecting the render time. You can download Blender Cyclos X version from Blender site if you choose Experimental Branch option. You will find Cyclos X branch on the list. Just download it, extract it anywhere you want, and you are set. Blender Cycle 6 goal is to improve the architecture of rendering engine for future development, improve usability of viewport and batch rendering, improve performance on modern CPUs and GPUs, and introduce more advanced rendering algorithms. Today we will focus on the performance. I will use our ARC interiors for Blender collection as a benchmark. I downloaded it from Evermotion Shop. I just drag and drop Blender files to Blender instance. It's just as simple as that. The first scene that I am going to test is scene number one from Arch Interiors Vol 48 for Blender collection. It's a nice loft with a lot of wooden materials. First, I set my render samples to 128. I need to turn off squared samples option in advanced settings. It basically increases sample count to the power of 2, so when you selected 64 samples and they are squared, in fact you are rendering 64 times 64, which is 4096 samples. We don't need as many samples in this test, so I uncheck square samples and change number to 128. 128 is rather low, so we will render our scene in 1200 samples too just to see the image that can be treated as a final. One word about denoisers in Blender. In current stable version, which is Blender 2.92, we have three options. NLM denoiser, Intel Open Image denoiser and Nvidia Optics denoiser. In Blender 3.0, NLM denoiser will be removed, because AI-based denoisers like Optics and Open Image denoiser give better results. So there will be only two denoisers in the final version. I will use Optics Denoiser in both renders, in Blender 2.92 and Blender 3.0 Alpha. So here we have it, the first scene. At first let's look at the render that is taken straight from Evermotion Shop. It was rendered with 64 squared samples on CPU, which means total of 4096 samples. I haven't tested CPU performance yet because with the modern GPU at my hand, I don't think that CPU rendering on cycles makes sense accounting that you have enough of GPU memory. GPU rendering is much faster and it is the future of cycles in my humble opinion. So let's look at the next image. This one was rendered with only 128 samples using cycle 6. As you can... Cycle 6... Nice name. As you can see, there is a lot of noise here, but they rendered also optics the noiser pass and it can give sometimes astounding results. But of course, there are many artifacts here due to a low sample rate, so let's see how this image looks when we use 1200 samples. It's non denoised version, still we can see a lot of noise, let's get rid of it. And it's the final version, denoised by optics. It looks quite nice actually. The noise did a really good job here and saved us a lot of render time. So, how long did it take to make these renders in Cycles and how long it was using Cycles X? Let's see the results. As you can see, it took only 2 minutes and 5 seconds for Cycles X to render our image with 128 samples. For comparison, 
Blender 2.92 with regular cycles render this image for 4 minutes and 30 seconds. That means that we shortened the render time by 36%, stunning to say the least. The great part of both parts is the time that it took to load the scene into memory and start rendering. In both cases it was just about 1 minute. When rendering with 1200 samples, it took 15 minutes and 35 seconds for cycle 6 to deliver the image. On the contrary, regular cycles struggled for 35 minutes and 50 seconds with this scene. We are talking here about insane 45% gain, absolutely stunning result when we take into consideration that it is a just a very early alpha version. This time prefetching the scene took also just about a minute in both cases. I'm very impressed with Cycle 6 performance with this scene. Let's look if we will be able to shorten rendering times of other scene too. So this is a scene number 4 from the same Evermotion collection. It is also a loft, this time a bit more vintage. This is how it looks when rendered in 128 samples without denoising. And with optics denoiser enabled. And now with 2400 samples, without denoiser and with denoiser. What was the render time? Here are the results. Again, Blender Cycle 6 beats regular cycles versions by far. Only 33 seconds for low quality rendering and only 5 minutes and 13 seconds for rendering with 2400 samples. To render this last image, older cycles version needed over 30 minutes. It means that new cycle sex can be almost 6 times faster. Absolutely insane result and I cannot wait to see the next versions of Blender. Good work Blender developers. That's all for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. For more CG news, visit evermotion.org. You can buy these scenes from Evermotion's shop. I put a link in the description. Happy rendering.